Welcome to the lesson uh, regarding weight components on an incline. In this video, you're going to learn um, how to establish what the weight components on an incline are, how to calculate them, why those are calculated as those components, and also what they do for the object that's on the incline. All that very important in our study. All right, so let's get going here. We have a frictionless incline to keep this simple at first we'll add friction to make the problem more difficult at a later time but for sake of learning just the way components on an incline are our um, incline will be frictionless of course we understand that if we did that that the um, box uh, the blue box pictured here would simply slide down the incline and so what we're looking at here is a snapshot of this event at any moment in time where the, where the object is traveling down the incline. We want to analyze the forces acting on it at this, at this spot right here. So if I were to ask you to draw the free body diagram for the weight components, on, or I'm sorry, for just the forces acting on the object, not the weight components, but for the forces acting on it, what would you label here? Well, usually the first thing that students uh, shout out is that they would label the, the weight itself, which of course is straight down. So we would go ahead and we would draw that vector, um, which represents the weight of the object, and we would label it mg for weight. Lots of other things you could do here. You could F subscript little g, or you just use w, little w. Um, but we will use MG, or at least it will be modeled for you on this. Are there any other forces acting on the object? Well, we have the incline pushing back against the object and pushing back perpendicular against the incline, and we will call that normal force. So we'll label that F subscript capital N. Normal force is the force of a surface pushing back on an object and to be normal in physics means to be perpendicular so that force is perpendicular to the surface are there any other forces acting on our blue object on a frictionless incline the answer is no however we understand that one of these forces is causing the object to slide down the incline well what would that be well, if the incline had a shallow angle to the horizontal, labeled theta in this diagram, we understand that the box would move slowly. If it has a steep angle, the box is going to move quickly. In that way, we understand that that force causing the box to slide down the incline, which we would label as this green arrow right here, notice that it's dashed and not solid, Please make it dash on your diagram as well. This has to be related to the weight of the object somehow. Okay. So there's one of your weight components in green. The other weight component is the component that is perpendicular to the incline. And what it does is it holds the box against the incline. So there you have a, two components. One is parallel to the incline, the other is perpendicular to the incline, and each has a function. The one parallel to the incline causes the box to slide down the incline, and the one perpendicular to the incline holds the box against the incline. Okay, now what we want to discover is how to calculate um, these components. What we're going to do is we're going to form a parallelogram out of our green components. And we're going to take our parallel component and bring it down just like that right there. And we are going to only form part of the parallelogram. We understand that to make the total parallelogram, we would now take the perpendicular component and repeat it between the end of the weight and the parallel component of the weight but we're not going to do that uh, to further muddy up our diagram. Because really all we need 
is this parallel component transposed down here to make this right triangle uh, pictured in the diagram. So you can see we have a right triangle here because parallel and perpendicular are perpendicular to each other. And we have a right triangle here with the, re the, with the red, the black incline, the line that represents the black incline itself, and the dashed black line that represents uh, the horizontal. Okay? Now, where are we going with this? We have uh, established here two similar triangles, and I'm going to prove to you that they're similar uh, with this next part of this discussion. What does it mean to be similar triangles? It means that the two triangles' angles are identical and that their sides are proportional. So if we take and label the angle theta as single blue, then I'm going to uh, label the complementary angle to that double blue. So we have this single, uh, single angle theta, the double blue, and the right angle shown in red. Okay? All right. What we're trying to figure out in this other triangle that we have a right triangle, which one of them is also the angle theta? And it may be intuitive to you that it's got to be this one right here, but we're going to prove to you why that is. Okay? Okay, so if this double angle blue is a complementary angle to theta, then since this parallel component is parallel to the black line representing the incline, that makes this also the angle labeled double blue. So these two angles are identical. They have to be uh, since they are both relative to the red line and the dashed green line and the black line are parallel to each other. And you notice that these two angles, these two lines are also perpendicular to each other, which means this angle in the single blue, labeled theta, on the uh, the red and the green triangle, is complementary to the double blue angle, just like the angle of the incline originally labeled theta. So that's why these two triangles are similar, um, because they both have uh, identical angles and their sides are proportional. All of that discussion was to to uh, make sure that we understand that that angle between the perpendicular component and the weight itself is the same as the angle of the incline and that's really important because now we're going to use that to establish how do we calculate these parallel and perpendicular perpendicular weight components. Let's start with a perpendicular component. You notice that that perpendicular component is adjacent to the angle theta, labeled uh, between the perpendicular component and the red vector of the weight, and that the red vector representing the weight is the hypotenuse. So the perpendicular component is adjacent to the angle, the weight itself is the hypotenuse, what trig function relates those two? And of course your your response would be cosine. So to calculate this perpendicular component, we would say that that is the same thing as mg cosine theta. And you will need to know that at an instant. Similarly, the uh, parallel component is opposite the angle theta. And then we have the weight itself, which is the hypotenuse. So we have opposite, hypotenuse, and the angle itself, and the trig function that relates all that information, of course, is sine. So the parallel weight component, we would calculate mg sine theta.
Okay, so in summary here, what do you need to know? You need to know that the parallel weight component is calculated by mg sine theta. Theta is the angle of the incline. And it causes the object to slide down the incline. You need to know that the perpendicular weight component is calculated by mg cosine theta and that it causes the box to be held against the incline. All that you must know and you must know it um, off the top of your memory. There's no help on the reference table for this concept and you just simply need to know it. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, should a physics student of your caliber be able to, given this diagram, come up to the board and explain this uh, to your classmates or to somebody new? Yes, you should be able to. But for now, okay, until you're, you know, kind of further along, you need to be able to simply know parallel weight component mg sine theta causes the box or the object to slide down the incline. Perpendicular weight component mg cosine theta holds the object against the incline. All right, that'll do it. And if you have any questions on this, make sure you ask in class tomorrow. Note them now so that you don't forget.